And I say that to say, there's no need for me to do trends because I don't need to go viral. I just need to continue to build my community. And that goes back to, even if my community is only a thousand people, I'm cool with that. Because if I have a community of a thousand people that follow my mentorship program, purchase my products, this, that, and the third, I'm good. I'm meeting the goals that I want to meet. Two, one. Welcome to House Rich, the real estate show. We talk to average people that have done above average things in real estate. Today's guest is Sophia Martin, aka Philly's number one mobile notary. So we're going to talk about the uh, the notary business, but also going to talk about um, social media, how she um, has used that to to grow her business and how to how to kind of make a name for herself. Which I think is a cool topic because you see like people that are like uh, social media. I would say people, but influencers. And all, all, a lot of times it's in like a, um, not the notary isn't like a sexy business, but it's in like their, their realtors showing like million dollar houses and all that. But I think it's really cool to build a brand being a, a notary. So I want to get into that and a bunch of other things. So um, the uh, sponsor for today's show is uh, House Rich, the official brand of home ownership. Use promo code POD for a discount on merchandise. So uh, thank you for uh, joining me. And um, could you introduce yourself to the uh, the good folks? You're welcome. Yes, thanks for that spill of an introduction. Yeah, my name's Sophia Martin. I am from Atlanta. I'm currently in Philadelphia. And as you said, I have a mobile notary service here um, where we specialize in real estate transactions. Um, and yeah, that's that's the big broad spectrum of everything. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, and so could you talk a little bit about your background? Because I think it's interesting how you got to the notary business. So I know you um you went to college. So you were from Atlanta, you went to Philly for basketball. Um, you studied like on like pre med, um, in 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 college, and uh, now you're a notary. So it seems like kind of like a, a weird um uh transition. transition. How, how how did you get there? For sure. So um, like you said, I so I'm from Atlanta. Um, I I played basketball as well. I actually started kind of late. I didn't really take it serious. Like I didn't get on the AU circuit till probably about tenth grade. Um, okay. but I'm tall, so I'm six three. I'm very tall. Right. Um, and height is one of those things that you can't teach. So yeah, um, okay. somebody found me. Um, long story short, I got a scholarship to play basketball at Temple, which is in Philadelphia. Um, I came here in 2013, and I've kind of just been here since. Um, in college, I knew I wanted to, I knew I, I, I've always loved healthcare because my mom's in healthcare. So I was like, this just makes the most sense. I like helping people. I like medicine. I'm good at math and science. So I'm just going to do something in healthcare. Um, so I didn't, I didn't do pre-med and undergrad because I tell people basketball was my major because, you know, uh-huh. we have practices three, four times a day. Um, you don't really have much time to think outside of that. So I just did some like side healthcare major for like, uh, it's, what is it called? What was it called? Therapeutic recreation. That's sad. I don't know that, but it's just All helping right. people with disabilities. Um, but then, you know, you start to see that realistically there's really no there's there's definitely a a ceiling that's going to hit you probably within your first two to three years of your career like you can't go way past it because you're you have to be credentialed and licensed in order to elevate on the toning pole especially in healthcare okay Um, so I was like okay I'm gonna you know pursue going to medical school so I did a two-year program at Drexel University um so I got all my um, prerequisites I took my MCAT I did my volunteer I did everything I did needed to do and then I applied to medical school. Um, And then I did not get in the first round. So my plan was I'm just going to retake the MCAT. That's just the test that you need to take to get in. Um, So I was just going to retake it. Um, I would say I was it was May. Was it May? Yeah, I was going to retake it May of 2020. And the thing is, um, when you study for the MCAT, you usually carve out about two to three months right before you don't like study and then take a break because it's pointless. So you have to like hardcore study. So I was going to start March of 2020, but then COVID happened. Um, And with COVID, when COVID happened, it basically pushed all test dates to like September, October of that year. And like I said, you know, if you're going to be studying, you have to do it two to three months right before you're about to take the test. So it would be no point to study and then come back. So just was sitting at home a lot. Um, I started, I babysat for this couple who kind of changed my life. Basically, I started reading a lot of books, learned about financial literacy businesses, blah, 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 blah. Um, And then that's when I stumbled upon the fact that, you know, I could make the same amount of income as a doctor probably way sooner, um, but through starting a business. And so that's when I just got on YouTube, searched side hustles, went through literally everything, got from wholesaling to, of course, DoorDash and Amazon and wholesaling, all the other stuff. And then I landed on Notary. Um, and specifically a loan signing agent and literally the rest is history I just I bought a course um, and I just executed everything in that course I 
moved so I it's a weird time lapse so I moved back home with my parents and then I came back um but I did I executed everything in Philly and here we are uh, cool and so did you I know you said you looked at a bunch of side hustles did you actually do those or was it just notary was the first one no notary was notary was I would say the first one I think I did postmates for a day but then I realized like that I'm not doing this because like enough. postmates no one is not one, so like I said, I moved back to live with my parents and where my parents live, it's more so like a retirement area. Okay. A lot of people don't DoorDash. They don't do Postmates. So like the tips don't, don't make sense. You could be driving for hours unnecessarily. So I tried Postmates for a day. I was like, no. And then I, um, then I did notary and that's when it just, everything started clicking. Okay. And so the, I think one of the key things you said there was that she actually executed on the stuff. Cause I mean, a lot of okay. folks buy courses and just to just to buy and to say they bought them. Yep, yeah, just to say that they invested in themselves, but didn't do anything with the course. It's a crazy. Yeah. And so, what, what exactly is a, is a notary? Like, I know that I know that's kind of a broad question. Do lots of things, but what what is a notary? Yeah. So, in simple terminology, we're just a public official. So we have to um, actually get commissioned by the state of whatever state that you're in. Um, we're basically there. It's I, I tell people it's kind of like a middleman between us um, and the government, essentially, to just confirm your identity. So we're literally there to make sure you are who you say you are. Make sure nobody is forcing you to sign the documents in front of you. Um, and I guess to keep it simple that that's what a notary is and then to take it a step further a loan signing agent is a specific type of notary who specializes in real estate transactions so it, it's more than just notarizing and getting somebody to sign I have to actually guide somebody through if you're purchasing a home I got to tell you everything that you're signing on um, explain those documents to you and then get everything executed that way. Okay. And like I said, it's, it's super important to actually mention for folks to actually know, know what they're signing. Because if you ever mortgage or refi, like those documents are literally, they, it could be like 40, 50 pages of documents you're signing. And so a lot of times folks folks don't read them, they just sign the pages. But, you know, folks will have questions. So yeah, it's important that the notary, if like especially if like the loan office isn't there, they can actually explain what those documents are, because you should know what you're, you're, you're signing. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and so could you talk about what's like a, a day in the life of a, a notary? Because like I, I see... um. Like I'll see posts where folks are like, hey, notary made $200 in one hour. And I'm like, okay, that, that's how long the notary transaction took. But I, I know there's a lot of more stuff that, that goes on outside of that. But like, kind of like what's a typical day from like, um, and so this is a super far question from like finding a client to going on the um, the journey to signing documents. Like what's a typical day uh, for you? Maybe when you started versus now and as well. Absolutely. Um. Okay, that, how, where, how do I want to pose this? So, Really, so always remember this. What I tell people at the end of the day, we're still entrepreneurs, so no day looks the same. And I do mm -hmm. a plethora of different things. Um, so I'll I'll speak on my day in regards to like the notary component because remember I do YouTube and I have courses and I have a mentorship, yeah. so that's some like other stuff as well. But in regards to the notary, it's usually um, appointments do come the same day. Um, a lot of times, though, for transactions, they come at least three to four days prior because they want to go ahead and coordinate everything with the borrowers. Okay. Um, but so a tip typical day usually my appointments for the most part are planned ahead of time like I said sometimes I do get them last minute I personally I print documents the night before so all doc since we're mobile um since we're we're mobile right all documents are usually sent the day before sometimes they're sent the day of but okay. if possible I print everything the night before um because in the morning I like to just kind of get up and go um so the next day once everything is printed I just um I of course, I've already confirmed appointments with everybody, usually the day before as well. Um, and then I just kind of plan out my day like in the routes that I'm going to make essentially. So if I have four to five appointments, um, I make sure, you know, I have documents. I usually review, look over everything because sometimes there's power of attorneys. Um, it may be through an estate just little different things that come up so I go over the documents make sure I understand what's going on because like I'm sure you know no transaction is the same um yeah. yeah it could be a refinance but if somebody has a balloon you know you have to make sure that you understand how to break it down or if they're paying off the heel like it's just so much yeah. stuff that goes into it so I do my due diligence of just knowing what what is coming and then um just go, going to the appointments and just literally executing so I'll um go to like, I usually have a couple in the morning, some in the evening, sometimes it's random. It is so, so gotcha. random. Um, and then in between, I'm usually either at FedEx or UPS or home, just working on like um, non Martin's notary services stuff related, if that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. um, but just literally from sunup to sundown, just trying to maximize every 
free free second that I have. Like if I'm not too exhausted, I'm always working on something. Definitely. Gotcha. And and so you mentioned, you know, now like appointments come to you, but like the first, I don't know, month in the business, like how, how are you getting clients at, at that point? Right. And I still, and I still want, and I want to clarify, I still market, like I don't, I still, I still market um, through so whether it's social media, whether it's networking, whether it's having conversations, I network my, I mean, network, I market my business yeah. every single day. Um, and the same thing happened from the beginning. So when it, so there's two parts of um, notary work, there's general notary work, where it's like, just every day, like power attorney, small little documents, things here and there. That's general notary work. That usually comes from Google business pages. That is my number one marketing source. I tell everybody that because it's something that works in your sleep. Once you become num um, number one on the algorithm, the rest is history. Like literally somebody searches notary near me and I come up first okay. um, above UPS now. So it's All like right. that everybody usually calls me and I, soon I'm going to get to the point where I'm just going to send all of those calls to everybody because I can't even take them anymore right because yeah. I'm just so busy so that's on the general notary work side and then in regards to um the loan signing agent side I started with um so you start with signing services so those are like the middlemans between title company and then you as a notary um but then also just talking to people like one thing about one thing I've learned in this industry is you have it's not just about um that one transaction, it's about building relationships. Yeah. And through, and that's what I'm blessed through college gave me the gift of gab. Like I really know how to connect with people on a different level, um, show them that I really know what I'm talking about and then have them give me the opportunity so that I can go. So I just used a combination of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually just listening to Andre Hatchet talk earlier. Like when you find something that's working, you keep doing it. Like yeah, there's yeah. no need to try a million and one things if you've already found something. So once I literally tried everything, like I tried every marketing strategy you could pop from a made sign on my car to my window like I've tried everything uh -huh. and then the other thing I recommend people to do is when people do call you you always ask them how did they find your services because okay. then you know what's working right so you're not spending time and energy on other things um so yeah just found what's working and I just kept doing it okay um and so how are you you mentioned you no know, you're, you're at the point now where you are or you're potentially getting so many calls you can't do all the business so like how, how do you how do you scale that are you um do you have like folks that work under you or how are you kind of scaling the business because right. you can't be everywhere at multiple places at one time so potentially i'm thinking about finding a way to filter all the calls that i get to other local notaries but my thing is um and i've like kind of voiced this to everybody like i probably I won't be doing this full time past another year okay. because my my goal has always been real estate, right? I'm in the process right now of doing my first um, duplex. It's a new construction. So of course, I'm sure you know that is taking a whole amount of time. But my end goal is on the real estate side. And where I got that from is looking at the numbers, right? I, if I'm at the closing table five, six times a day, I'm seeing all these type of deals. Numbers don't yeah. lie. Yeah. And so, yeah, I can make 150 to 200 for an hour, but I can also, you know, have this property and not have any bills, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then take that to creating my passive income where I don't have to work anymore. I can only work with just, you know, my favorite title company at Quick Abstract or something of that nature. So, um, but I could scale it. You can create something called a signing agent or signing service, a signing agency where you do kind of middleman between title companies and notaries. Okay. I, heard, I just don't have any interest in it, interest in it at all oh, okay got, got you yeah. got you no. um and so i actually want to get into the uh the duplex part in a little bit but when, when it jump back to the, the marketing part again because may, maybe i missed it but what was like the most effective marketing strategy j just for you personally that you kind of found just consistency like you okay. had like and i know that's so cliche but it's true like it, at the end of the day and so this is what else helped me i worked at state farm um that was my sec I don't know. I had it maybe like a couple months before I started my notary business. And what I'm getting at is I was, I sold insurance and you have to make a hundred calls basically. Yeah. A day. And out of those hundred calls, you're only going to get two to three yeses. It's the same thing with the notary business. Mm -hmm. And so if you make 10 calls and all of them are no's and you give up, it is yeah, what yeah. like, there's nothing that's going to happen. So just consistency and staying with it. And 
all just altering my marketing strategies accordingly. Like in the beginning, I watched, we all watch a million and one YouTube videos and I just try everything. But as I started to really learn the industry, learn where the market is, learn exactly who I needed to market to, I found ways to like niche down who my target audience is going to be, right? I, I give this example all the time. I could easily go market to, um, I don't know, I could, if I have a church here, I could go to the church and say, hey, I'm a notary. Um, and that may bring me, you know, a few clients here and there because they may need random stuff notarized or I could go to a law firm where they complete wills all day long mm -hmm. all day or power of attorneys all day long and I know that they're going to need my services um the profit margin is going to be higher because you can charge more for those things so just just really targeting um who who you need to market to and then showing um why somebody should give you opportunity but that's something that just mm -hmm. comes from experience and I would not have learned all, any of that if I didn't do my due diligence of literally trying to market to everybody that I've met. Yes, so yes. it's just learning from your experiences, um, but actually like executing behind that, like, and and treating your time like it's not coming back because it's not, right? Mm -hmm. So me making a call to this person, I could be making a call to this person, um, which would, you know, be increasing my profit margins way more. Okay. Way. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. And so um, another super general question, but uh realistically what's um what's a realistic number that a notary you know they put in the work can probably expect to make in a in like a, a solid month you know someone that's you know doing all the stuff you know taking calls is it um a couple thousand five, i don't i, I just don't it can, so it's I, I tell people there's there's no there's no there's no ceiling to it okay. um you can make anywhere from 20 bucks a month to ten thousand dollars a month okay seriously yeah. It's, it's like, cause I have people in my mentorship group who, um, I, we go, everybody receives the same material. Everybody has the same resources, but not, not everybody actually puts in the time and effort behind it. Like if I'm telling you that you need to go network and you need to go have conversations with people and you go to the network event, but you barely talk to anybody. I don't know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're not going to get the same results because you're literally one conversation away from somebody just they could literally be like you know i'm just gonna have you come to the the title company and you're just gonna sit in here and do closings all day and when you're able to do that um you don't have to pay for gas to be traveling all over the place you don't have to print out any documents so there's no paper there's no toner they already have everything you're literally just coming signing and notarizing and you're able to profit way more as opposed to um you know if you're driving around all day gas is high gas is mad high right now supplies yeah. are going up it's just different profit margins um so i i don't i never put a number out there because it's literally whatever you put into the business but right, right it, that. Um, and so could you talk a little bit about your your mentorship program you know for somebody that's like hey i'm interested in, in the notary program how, how do you help folks with your mentorship for sure um so it so let me just i'll just do my little campaign than when people usually ask me so it's a, it's a monthly subscription of course that can be canceled at any time um every single sunday we have weekly zoom meetings it always starts out with like just a basic q a in that q a though it's very structured to the point where it's based on what people in the group need so like i want to know what did what did you try this week what did work? What did not work? What have you, since our, la since our last time speaking, did you execute on the material? Because if you didn't execute on what I told you, we cannot move forward, right? Yeah, yeah. So it starts with the weekly Q&A. Then we usually touch like different um, points in the, in the industry. Like, so today we're going to talk about on cutting down um, on table time, right? So closings can last anywhere from, I would say, 25 minutes to sometimes two and a half hours. But there's little things that you can do to make sure that you're cutting down on table time so that you can go ahead and attend other appointments some things are out of our control some things are not so we have we touch on just different components um, in the actual industry we um we have loan document review every two weeks so for those who um, maybe you're you've been a notary for a little while um and you're the biggest thing that's holding you back is you don't feel comfortable with loan docs we have that every single wednesday all of our Zoom meetings are recorded, so you have um, access to that whenever. And then we also have guest speakers, right? Um, I understand that I don't know everything. So I've been pulling in people with different um, ways that you can expand your notary business. So there's permit expediting, there's field inspections, building a signing agency. Last month, we had Miss Notary Consultant. So she talked about everything accounting wise, like entities, business credit, all of that other stuff. So it's like a, it's a one, and it's a one-stop shop for basically everything, but more importantly, it's a positive community full of notaries. Okay. Um, Cause a lot of groups out there, they're just not, 
they're just very negative because they don't want you to steal. They don't want you to steal their business. But yeah, I feel yeah. like when you look at it that way, you're already losing. You're already you've already defeated. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's like a one stop shop for whatever you want. And with every um, sign up, I guess you should say you get a free consultation so that we can evaluate where you are, whether you just started, whether you've been a notary for 20 years, come up with a plan of action so that you can start to get the results that you need. Okay, dope. And uh, so if anybody interested, uh, the link will be, whether you're watching YouTube podcast, the link will be in, in the bio um, somewhere down there. Um, and so for, uh, I want to get into the uh, the building, the duplex. Yeah, because I, I saw that in your YouTube channel, you're building a duplex. Um, and so you're building that from basically from from scratch, essentially. Like, how, how does that process work from, you know, uh, selecting a lot? Like, how did you figure out, hey, I want to purchase um, this this uh, particular lot. Sorry, can't talk. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll, of course, because we only have a certain amount of time. So I did do a whole video on that. So you guys, of course, can go to the YouTube channel sure. to look at that. Um, but long story short, it started with, it start, It goes all the way back to when I first started reading. And then I learned about business real, t- real estate stocks, right? And so you realize like at the end of the day, renting is ghetto. I need to get a property. Uh-huh. Um, then you, I went through the whole like, um, one, I'm entrepreneur, right? So getting a loan as an entrepreneur is not the easiest thing at all. So then it came into having a business partner, right? Somebody who I could leverage, um, you know, we could leverage both. And then also getting into real estate as an entrepreneur, you don't have, like, it's just a lot. So it's easy to have a business partner. So I started with, I was just going to buy a duplex that was already built, but the market here is very old. Mm -hmm. Um, The average house here built, I think it's like in the 1930s or 1920s. It's crazy. So it's like, and everything's overpriced. So I'm not purchasing anything that's overpriced and it's oh it just doesn't make sense so then i was going to do a fix and flip um then but the prices is just way too high numbers weren't adding up did not make sense um I, well i was going to we were going to do new construction we were going to purchase a new construction but too high then we we're going to do a um, distressed property too high and then it was just like might as well just get a plot of land and build right see what we can do from that um Based on how I pick the area, same thing everything everybody talks about, just seeing which areas you think would be um, next up and coming, right? Okay. Where, where Temple is, it's in North Philadelphia. North Philadelphia, I would say it's too late. It's way too late. Um, the past 10 years, though, it's definitely gentrified over time. But the area that I'm building in Germantown, the same thing is happening there as well. Everything that gotcha. I saw happen in North Philly, it's now happening in Germantown. Um, and it's li- it's only 15 minutes from where I live now, which is also important because as a business owner, I need to be able to still go to the work site, still, you know, be able to get here and there, but run my business as well. Gotcha. Um, and so that's how I got to a plot of land. Um, and that's that's where we are. Roger that. And so, you, you, so my next question, you kind of mentioned a little bit was the, the financing piece, especially being like a, a new entrepreneur. Like how, what what type of what type of financing did you how did you go about like financing the, the project? Right. So I have a business partner and we are okay. le- we're leveraging a line of credit. OK. Yeah. Oh, so okay, I'm, okay. Yeah. So I have a, that. So then but that's the main reason why. And that's why I also encourage other people as well to look into having partners, um, because like you said, as one, as an entrepreneur, our interest rates are going to be way higher. Yes, there are bank statements, loans, bank statement loans. Um, but you know, that sometimes the numbers just do not make sense, right? If if that's your only option, then most definitely you can do that. You can even use a um, hard money lender. Like there's so, two or three K loan. There's so many different options out there. And that's mm-hmm. the other thing that I, that I, it took me seven months to figure out what we were going to do, right? Because right. there's so many options out there. If this doesn't work, then we have to try something else. And that goes back to what we were speaking earlier. Like you, you got to get to your hundred phone calls to get your yeses, right? We had yeah. to go through so many different types of strategies to get to where we wanted to go and to also make sure it makes sense. So in my particular situation, we're leveraging um, a line of credit um, and then just basically taking care of everything on the front and the back end. So like you have to pay for like the architect, things of that nature. And that's separate from like um, the, I'm learning, but it's like a civil engineer and like Mm -hmm. the engineering costs, it's just so many different things. And then for the line of credit, when you take out a line of credit, there's also interest. So Mm -hmm. once we do start to deduct, you know, um, certain amounts to pay the contractor, then you got to pay for interest and things of that nature. Um, And then after what we'll probably do is do like a cash out refinance. So hopefully get a good appraisal way above, do a cash out refinance, and then just finance the deal. Okay, okay, cool, dope. And then so um, overall, and maybe I have this laid out, but what's the, the plan? So you're gonna, um, I assume you get in the duplex, maybe house hack, and then to build the real estate portfolio for there, have you kind of thought out, I don't know, the, the five, 10 year plan or? 
Um, n- yes and no. So right now the plan is to probably um, build one property a year because the other thing is supply and demand. So that's the other thing I forgot to um, mention earlier. And I talk about this on the YouTube video as well is there's not enough homes in America right now for the um, demand of buyers. That's why everything is so overpriced. Yeah. And we lost a year in COVID, right? So we're super behind. Um, and But people do want to buy properties. So I don't, the first two is just going to be to house pack and to like eliminate all my bills. That is the first, that's the first thing. So first one living there rent free, cool. Then the second one, um, I should be able to use that for like my main bill. So insurance, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after that, going to continue to build, but then just have to decide if we're going to take the route of, um, buying and selling versus buying and holding. And honestly, I'm, as an investor, I'm probably going to do buy and hold because I don't re- I don't need the cash. So I have a business, which is gotcha. due to grace of God. So probably just buy and hold. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. But in the future, I I, I like it. So maybe become a developer. Okay. Um, but we'll see when we cross that road. Oh, OK, awesome. Um, and so uh, now I want to jump into the social media world uh, a little bit. And so um, for you, I don't know, I think you have about what? 55,000 on TikTok and like 22 mm-hmm. on YouTube, just just so you guys can kind of have a um, idea of where she's speaking from as far as you know success on those channels um and so uh like so tiktok versus like instagram and reels kind of what, what's your thoughts on that i think a lot of folks say you know i only, only say tiktok's the way of the future tiktok is now uh instagram's kind of falling off do you think that one like tiktok is pretty much going to take over where instagram is at some point or or maybe That's- it's already taken over I- I think I honestly think it already has. I think the Insta, I think the Instagram algorithm is so botched um, that it it still it still gets the job done in regards to an influencer, but platforms like TikTok will expedite it times ten. Okay. That that's just that's just what it is right now. The reason why is because right now we're in um, a space of video content. Yes. Yeah that is anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds um instagram was late to the game they're trying to push that now that's why they're pushing reels even more than posts and so i think i think where instagram went wrong is they should have stuck to what they were good at which was photos Mm -hmm. if we want to see photos if we want to see posts that's what they should have stuck to tiktok's thing is short videos right Mm -hmm. yeah they're probably add something on um officially but to answer your question tiktok what I recommend people to do is if you're just starting off right now, um, I personally wouldn't even create an Instagram. I would just get on TikTok right. because TikTok allows you to grow way faster and it does the same thing that Instagram does, if not to a high caliber level. Somebody right. that um, I'm mentoring, like she was trying to get like one, one um, core sale for so long. I t- make a TikTok, make a TikTok. Mm-hmm. She made a TikTok and made a sale. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's, and I don't know, I think, I think TikTok's algorithm is better. And then what you can do to take it a step further is um, link TikTok with YouTube. I love YouTube because it's, it's an asset um, that you, that you can always leverage and use at any point in time, right? Yeah. I've actually just finished taking a, little, a mini hiatus from social media, because those are things that you definitely have to do. Okay. Um, and, but I can, but now now that I'm back, I can post videos whenever I want and get paid from it. So what I tell people is you use TikTok as kind of like a, um, a introductory to who you are, your business, a sneak peek into everything that you have going on. But then off, also a couple of things. One, you always go back to YouTube. You always say like, hey, if you want to learn more information, I have a YouTube channel with more extensive information. Um, and then from that, you'll be able to go into selling your digital products or having a mentorship group or whatever the case may be. Because me personally, if I'm going to invest into somebody's products, first, I need to understand your teaching style. So mm-hmm. TikTok introduces who you are. YouTube allows people to understand your teaching style, your values, your morals, whatever. Um, and then that will lead to whatever else it is you have on the back end. And more importantly, once you monetize YouTube, you get paid for it every single video you post, right? Yeah. So I, Instagram, yeah, like I'm honestly trying to convert everything from Instagram to TikTok and YouTube because yeah. it's just not... They're 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 gone. I like Twitter more than Instagram now. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so let let's say somebody is has a um is doing all right on Instagram. They're trying to make the t- transition to TikTok. Is it is it the same content or can you post like you like, like obviously you know real is sixty seconds, thirty seconds. Can you just repost the same content on uh, TikTok or do, do you think it has to be some sort of like difference in the or the you know what I'm right. trying to say like 
Right. Um, I would, you, so that's what I do. Cause like, I'm too busy. I, that's why I had to take a hiatus. Cause I was overworking myself. Like I felt as though I needed to post on all these platforms all the time and make different types of content. No, my strategy is I make, um, I focus on what, what is making money? What is working? If TikTok is the main thing, I make TikToks and I'll just throw them on Instagram. And I don't really care what the algorithm does with it. Because if a few people see it, that's cool. Because I know where my main audience is. Okay. Um, but TikTok is just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just videos. Like, in mm-hmm. it, you're, that's what I love about social media. Even though it can be a negative sometimes, you, you can create whatever you want, right? Like, if yeah. you want to create like a mini show, um, or like a little mini series, um, and then just lead it to that. But for business owners, um, there's two types of social media users, business owners, and everybody else who's just yeah. posting in front of it. It's nothing wrong with either, right? But if you are a business owner, everything you post has to be purposeful. There has to be a call to action somewhere along those lines. Even if you're not asking people for money, still, they sh- you should be leading them to your YouTube channel, or you should be leading them to something else that's coming, or joining your Facebook group, or something, right? Right. Um, because like we see, Instagram is not; it's dying. It's been dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every 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 post is like if if it's a successful post, every post is like a hundred bots in it to to begin with. So, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, I'm... what what's the key to um being like found on TikTok? I know there's like hashtags and all that stuff, and obviously, the better the video, the better. But you know, you you have let's say you have zero followers on TikTok and you're trying to grow. Like what what's what's like a a tip you would give to somebody? Um, just be yourself. Just be yourself and post what you would normally post because um, and don't I it's weird. I don't watch other people in my industry on okay. purpose because if the more you watch other people in your industry, I used to just for topics and just to know what I necessarily did not like or what I could do better. Um, but the more you watch other people, the more your content is going to indirectly become like their content. The best thing you could do on social media is just be different. Be different and be yourself. You have to, if every if everybody else is doing the same thing, what's going to separate your content from anybody else? Mm-hmm. Um, don't, I, I used to do the whole, I'm, I've changed a lot. I used to do the whole, like, I need to know every trend. I'm going to learn every single dance. I'm going to make sure this trending song is going to go with it. Th- I don't do none of that anymore. And I'm not uh-huh. going to because it's not me. I don't care about that stuff enough. I'm, I, I use TikTok as a mentor and a business owner to teach. That's all. So I personally, I don't need to do all that. I just need to get in front of the camera, give a couple facts, say what I got to say and go about my business. Every now and then I can spice it up. Um, but Going back to your question, in advice is just being organic and staying true to yourself. Like if you know, for example, you have a podcast, right? So on every single TikTok, every single video that you have, it should be subscribed to our podcast or this is where you find us or whatever the case may be, right? Always, when it comes to business owners, you should always be thinking about your long-term goal. Okay, yes, in this moment, they're going to be watching this 15 second clip, but Mm -hmm. 10 months from now, let's say I drop something or I want to reach the masses of people and Instagram is down. How am I going to do that? So it should always be kind of acting as a funnel to essentially build a community. And I tell people all the time, you don't need, you don't need 10,000 people to be following you to build a solid community. You may really only need a hundred, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like focusing on what's at hand, outlining your goals on what, what it is you're trying to get from social media, like for you. If you get on TikTok, what is your goal of TikTok? To get more subscribers to your podcast, to get merchandise sold, to mm-hmm. get this done. And so, for example, if you're trying to get merchandise um, so like you're doing right now, every single podcast you're on, you should always have your gear on. And that's what I'm bad at. I need to like mm-hmm. get some merchandise, um, but things like that. So just knowing why you're posting, because um, me personally, I don't really post for likes anymore or like to be the Instagram model or the baddest person. No, I post yeah. to teach. I post to tell as many people as I can about my business. And so I always keep that in the back of my mind whenever I'm creating content. Okay, thank you. And so the the stuff you you mentioned that um, you kind of do less of now, do you think that helped you when you started or do you think it kind of maybe uh, stifled your growth when you started? Because like I I haven't gone back to the beginning of the Instagram, no, your your IG, but, or not Instagram, but TikTok, but did you do all the the trends and all that when you started? Like, do you think that, okay. Okay, so you never did. No, either. but okay. once I, once I, I was, it does, it does help. It does help because it's all an algorithm at the end of the day. But this is how my mind processed everything for um, that. Granted, I could. So it, it, and this goes back to just how you make money on social media. Because at the end of the day, if it don't make money, it doesn't make sense in my opinion. Um, 
me getting me having a lot of content that goes viral what that helps with is brand deals because yeah. the tiktok creator fund is trash you could get a million views and they may only pay you like 64 dollars. you get on youtube and and um get a million views you you're you may walk away with oh well over ten thousand dollars you know what i'm saying like it's just a different profit margin um so it goes back to like what it is you're trying what it is you're trying to get from like and that's the other thing i thought i wanted brand deals but i don't really i don't I don't really, I don't really like them anymore because it's just, it's too many stipulations that go into it. I would okay. rather pick and choose. So I'm now I'm at a point where I pick and choose who I want to work with. Like I reach out to brands like, Hey, okay. I, do you have an influencer program? I would like to work with you. The people that email me, unless it is a perfect match and alignment, I'm not doing it. Okay. And I say that to say, there's no need for me to do trends because I don't need to go viral. I just need to continue to build my community. And that goes back okay. to, even if my community is only a thousand people, I'm cool with that. Because if I have a community of a thousand people that follow my mentorship program, purchase my products, this, that, and the third, I'm good. I'm meeting the goals that I want to meet, right? Some people, depending on what it is, what message you're trying to portray, like if you are a beauty influencer, you need to be doing the trending sounds because you need as many people to see the product so that you make money through affiliate links, excuse me, and that you can continue to get brand deals. Once I went through the whole brand deal era and I realized that's not what I want, trending, I don't care about trends anymore. It's just more about getting my stuff out there. Cool. And so what, what's the... Uh, a typical brand brand deal like so basically a brand reaches out to you says hey do some videos for xyz what as a month of dollars or kind of what's it um, varies it varies sometimes sometimes it only um actually i need to create like a course or something about this but it varies it sometimes it's just products but you're indirectly making money from it, if that makes sense. For example, right? So um, as a notary public, a lot of times I have to scan documents back um, after the closing. Scanners are expensive, right? A good scanner, the scanner I have in there now, retail is probably like $650. I was already gonna have to buy a scanner. Just so happened that a company reached out to me and was like, hey, we will send you a free scanner if you do a review on our YouTube channel. So, you know, it's so indirectly, I was already going to pay that $650. Now I don't even have to pay that. And all I'm doing is making a video on my YouTube channel and I'm getting paid for this video from YouTube, from Google. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, so that's one way Two, you can do it for money as well. So I currently do have, a, I'm under contract for a couple of brand deals. Um, and basically it's a lot. Like there's, there's a platforms that you can sign up with. Um, okay. but the thing is, there's so much that goes into it. Like if somebody's paying you a hundred dollars, um, but you know, there's, there's five edits. So basically you make the video. Oh, I don't like how you said this, please remake it. And then I'm also busy. I don't have time for that. Yeah. And I can go make this same hundred dollars doing what I already do. So sometimes yeah. it doesn't really make sense in okay. my, opinion, for no, my schedule. You. But now in the, but that's a, it's just it's so much like anybody can do it like even with you right you have a podcast you could easily like come up with some analytics um say this is the amount of people that listen to my videos and then just offer like sponsorships between all of your podcasts to just simple people things of that nature um same thing with and you can leverage that with brand deals as well mm -hmm. and what i tell people is you you need to go this was my problem when i first started i wanted everything right i wanted the free hair the free makeup the free skincare <laughs> free this, free that, but I'm not a beauty influencer. I'm not, that doesn't align with my brand. What does align with my brand is no, notary and real estate. So then I started catering it towards those businesses and then it makes sense. So then I'm able to see like the, um, res the results that they want to see, but also like make money, easy money on stuff that I already know about. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff you would be kind of, sort of doing anyway. So it makes sense. Okay. Oh, yeah. So now, now I want to jump into to the YouTube world. So, um, I know I think you monetize your YouTube in like 20, 24 days, am I? Do the grace okay. of God, yeah. Okay, and so um, I know that that's obviously uh, atypical for anybody listening, but what, what do you think uh, catapults you to that uh, monetizing in that 24-day uh, time frame? Right, same thing I was talking about earlier, and I actually, I have a course out, but I'm redoing all of it. It's going to be 10 times better now right. that I've grown it as much. Um, but same thing that I was talking about with TikTok, just being just being yourself, but more importantly, knowing what you're talking about, because okay. it's 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 a multifaceted thing. Like I tell people, it starts with the thumbnail, because at the end of the day, when you get on YouTube, the thumbnail is the first thing you see. So you need something that's going to capture people's attention so that they want to mm -hmm. click on it. Now, that's one half of the battle, too. When they click on the video, you got to keep them 
entertain. And you have to know what you're talking about. You have to be able to provide value to people's lives. On social media, you make money two ways. Either you're going to, um, you know, educate people, teach people, or you're going to tell your whole business, tell your whole life, essentially. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's only two ways because you have to keep people entertained. Um, so that's why when it comes to like, especially with us businesses and what I do, what I find really helps me is, is having notes and being structured because I don't, I don't need to be on the camera rambling. People are not going to stay engaged in the video and I'm not going to make money from the video because they're not going to watch the ads at the end of the day. So um, it's about just delivering good content and then also being consistent, right? I, I took a hiatus. I took almost like a two to three month hiatus. I've been posting, but not like how I've really, like how I really can post. Why? Cause I needed a break. But now that I'm um, coming back, it's like, okay, I have to do something different. I got to get my audience back engaged. I have to create content. So it's like, and the other thing is just finding, finding a way to be different. Again, YouTube is the same way. I forgot what the statistic is, but I, it, it was like, I think like a thousand people upload a video every 60 seconds. That's a lot of competition. You know what I'm saying? And there's no limit to how much that you can upload. There's no limit to the platform. So you have to find ways to stick out. Like, even if it's like at the beginning of every video, you have a crazy intro with the song that people like, or you have a giveaway every five episodes. Like there's so many little things that you can do. Um, but in regards to actually going viral and building a community, it's all about the content. You It's about what you put out. Like anybody can make a thumbnail. You can go on Fiverr and get a thumbnail made. Yeah. But if your video is trash, they're not, next time you post a video, they're not going to be paying you no mind. Yeah, <laughs> Make, makes sense. Um, so how, how do you come up with content ideas? Because, you know, um, I don't know how often you, you post a video, but you're posting one every week or, or twice a week. It seems like you may, the average person may run out of ideas. Like how do you come up with ideas for your, your content? Right. So, um, I, again, there's two types of people, business owners, tell their whole business. I'm on the business owner side. So I just do it according to what's going on in my business. Literally. Okay. I don't, I don't go outside of myself at all. So, um, something else that I've recently started, um, to help teach people more is like every time I'm at a closing table and I experience something that I've never experienced, or I think it's a learning lesson, I take out my phone, record what happened and then just post it. That's okay. it. So like finding ways to, um, incorporate it back to your business but it also comes into having a plan of action like at the end of the day what is the end goal of everything for me it's my mentorship group because I know that the value that I'm able to provide through that mentorship group is uh, is it incomparable uncomparable I don't know which one it is to anything I could put on YouTube because there's yes. just and that's uh, it's through discord you can contact me whenever you want so with me it's knowing that I'm going to give you so much free information so that when I am advertising this mentorship group, you're like, dang, bro, like if she's telling me all this free information, then what in the world is in the mentorship group? Yeah. And so that's where that's where it leads to. So and even if it's, your end goal is not a mentorship group, if your end goal is literally just to build a community or just to hit 10,000 subscribers, do that. But everybody's goals are different. So it's really just about outlining your goals, knowing what you want to do, um, and then just creating a plan to get everything done. Okay, thank you. And this may be the same answer, but the same question I kind of asked with uh, TikTok. So um, I'm starting a YouTube channel. I got no followers. Um, what, what, what's what's kind of like the first couple of things I should I should do on my, my page? Um, on the YouTube page? Yes. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the same answer. It's, it's like I just said, um, and don't, uh, I wish I was already done with it. I'm I, hopefully I'm done in like April. I'm really taking my time. Cause I want to put everything into it. Okay. Um, but it starts. So thumbnails is first Two at the end of the day is the content that you provide out. That's, that's the main part. Now, in order to get into, get it into the, in front of the right people, that's where you leverage to platforms like TikTok and Instagram, um, because you're promoting, hey, I have a YouTube channel. This is, um, this is where all the information is. And that's the other thing, FAQ. So common questions that you get all the time, you should be making videos about things like that. Topics that people really want to hear about, you should be making videos about that. That's the other thing. Don't necessarily make content about things that you think that they want. Ask them, put a yeah. poll out. What do y'all want to know? When you get on TikTok, you're, you get a lot of questions. Take that, take those um, questions. You can make a 15 second video answering and then say, if you want to learn more, if you want to learn more tips and tricks, head over to my YouTube channel. Another thing, you can join Facebook groups where, you know, um, I'm talking to small businesses. You, there's 
Facebook groups about everything. You find a Facebook group. Um, there's always going to be questions because people always want free resources. Yeah. What I used to do is I would answer the question in maybe one or two sentences and then just give them the link for the video. And then it, that's how it would slowly but surely funnel my community. Like when I first started, people don't understand I was I treat I treat YouTube like a business, right? Mm -hmm. I've been slacking on my YouTube business because I needed a hiatus from social media. But at the end of the day, it's a business, right? If if the goal is to get monetized and I need a thousand subscribers in um is it a thousand? Yeah, a thousand subscribers, a thousand watch hours, which is 240,000 minutes. I need people to get to my channel. Mm -hmm. Who the the most the people who are most going to be interested in my channel are people who are either already notaries, interested in notaries, want a side want a side hustle like real estate. That is who I need to find. So I'm very intentional now about um, who I'm going marketing to. Right? Of course, you'll have your random stragglers, but if there's already an audience for you, there's no need in just making something up. Go find who is most going to benefit from your content, get it in front of them. And then they'll tell somebody, this person will tell somebody, oh, YouTube sees that, you know, you're getting more views than last week. They'll bump it up a little bit, add it to their recommendations, and then it'll just snowball from there. But that's why I say consistency, because in order to get that threshold, you really got to be super, super consistent for at least like a month straight. Okay. Right. Because just so you can get into the algorithm, because once you get monetized, like I just told you, I can go all year without posting and then post a video next year and I can make money from it. Right. As okay. opposed to TikTok, it's more so on like a one video based. Mm -hmm. OK, sure. cool. Cool. Thank you. Um, Appreciate your time. That was a, a wealth of knowledge from the notary business to building a home to kind of work in the social media space. The, uh, the last question I always ask folks is, um, let's say you have I give you a million dollars. You have a week to spend it on something real estate specific. You have to spend the whole million dollars or you, you don't get to use it at all. What would you do with the money? It has to be real estate specific. Yeah, it, real estate. Yeah, just something real estate related. Like I said, it could be notary business. It could be buying land in the metaphor. Just something real estate adjacent, at least. For sure. Um, That's a good question. Um, I don't know about today's market. If we were in the bull market from last year, I would just stick it in a mutual fund and then use the rate of return to invest into a property so then I never have to touch the million dollars. Uh, but honestly, I probably still do that today because the market's going to bounce back up. We just don't know when. Um, so I probably I don't think I would touch the principal. Uh, my mom has kind of instilled that into me. I wouldn't touch the principal. I would invest it into like a mutual fund and live off the rate of return. Um, if that was absolutely absolutely not an option, um, just buy buy. I would, no, you know what? I would probably buy a good blend of um, just lot like, lots like unused lots because those are super easy um, deals, and then um, probably like a commercial lot like a um strip mall area or i don't know that's a good question because a million dollars is a lot yeah. um but yeah uh, yeah i would mutual fund first and then live off the uh, rate of return or i would just buy lots oh, okay cool cool thank you and uh so where can the the good folks find you on uh tiktok uh instagram youtube uh, your sure. your courses like where can the folks uh, find those at for sure. Um, so I've changed it. So it's super simple. It's literally just my first and last name. So Sophia, S-A-F-I-Y-A, last name Martin. And I'm sure you'll put that in the description box. Yes. And then from everything, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, there's a link tree floating around with all the resources that we discussed today. Um, and then, like I said, I'm actively redoing my YouTube course because I there's so much I need to add to it. So that'll probably be here in like April, May-ish, something okay. along those lines. Oh, okay, Roger. That um, once again, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on the uh, the show. And there is a uh, no outro to the show, so it is over. All right, thank you. Oh, appreciate.